In this lab, we will begin the dissection of a frog. We are using a frog for our first dissection because it is relatively easy to work with and its anatomy is easy to see. Our specimen for this lab is a common bullfrog. We will look at its external anatomy and then examine the structures of its mouth. Notice the skin. The frog is an amphibian, so its skin is smooth and moist, not dry and scaly like a reptile's skin, and not hairy like the skin of a mammal. Its skin is darker on its dorsal side than on its ventral side. This is an example of countershading, which is a form of camouflage we will learn about in biology. A frog has four appendages, two forelegs and two hind legs. There are four toes on each of its forelegs and five toes on each of its hind legs. Notice the webbing between the toes. This webbing helps the frog swim in the water. Its longer hind legs help it jump on land. The size of an animal sometimes helps us determine its gender, whether it is a male or female. Fully grown female bullfrogs are larger than fully grown male bullfrogs. A female bullfrog will grow to be at least seven inches or 18 centimeters long, but a male will be shorter. Let's measure the length of this frog from the tip of its mouth to the end of its backbone. We do not include the legs in the measurement. We see that this frog is 6.75 inches or 17 centimeters long. From this information, we know that its gender is male. Now, Let's examine some of the structures on the head of the frog. In the anterior region of the frog, near the mouth, are two slotted openings. These are the external nares, or external nostrils. Posterior to the nares are the eyes. A frog has two large bulging eyes. It is interesting to note that the frog has three eyelids. One pair of eyelids open and close to protect the frog's eyes while the amphibian is on land. The frog's third eyelid is a transparent membrane that protects the eyes while the frog is swimming underwater. Sometimes the third eyelid becomes cloudy when the frog is prepared for dissection. That is why we cannot clearly see the features of its eyes. Right behind each eye is a round, flat structure. This is the tympanic membrane. A frog uses its tympanic membranes for hearing, similar to the way we use our eardrums. The size of the tympanic membrane is also an indication of the gender of a frog. A male's tympanic membranes will be larger than its eyes, but a female's tympanic membranes will be about the same size as its eyes. Notice that the tympanic membrane on this specimen is larger than the eye. This confirms that this frog is a male. Now let's flip the frog over and look at some of the structures inside its mouth. Once a frog specimen has been prepared, its jaws become set. So we need to pry its mouth open to look at the structures inside. We will use a blunt probe to force the mouth open wide enough to insert a finger and then pull back on the mouth to hold it open just a little. Next, we will use a pair of scissors to cut the muscles at the corners of the mouth in order to release the jaws. As we pull up on the jaw, we should feel it let loose. We can pull up on the lower jaw to open the mouth. Notice the tongue. A frog's tongue is split in the middle. A frog can stretch its tongue out quite far and quite rapidly. It can do this because the tongue is attached towards the front of the mouth. It comes out like this. When we examined the external anatomy on the dorsal side of the frog, 
we saw the external nares. The nares open into the mouth cavity here and here. These are called the internal nares. Did you know that some frogs have teeth? A frog's teeth are not made for biting or chewing like our teeth are. They are designed to hold the frog's prey while it eats. The bullfrog has a row of tiny teeth along the edge of its upper jaw. Right between the internal nares is another set of teeth. If we pull the mouth open a little wider, we can see two openings at the side of the mouth, near the back of the throat. These are the eustachian tubes. The eustachian tubes equalize the pressure in the frog's ears while it is swimming. Between the two eustachian tubes is the beginning of the esophagus. The esophagus is a tube leading from the mouth to the stomach. Just below the esophagus is another opening. This is the glottis, which is the opening to the trachea. The trachea is a tube that leads to the frog's lungs. This flap is called the epiglottis. When the frog swallows food, the epiglottis closes the trachea to keep food from entering the lungs. We have just begun our examination of the frog's anatomy. In the next two labs, we will continue to study the internal anatomy of this amazing animal. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.